In this video, I'm going to show you my three absolute favourite effects that I use so often, I might use them a little bit too much. My name's Dan, you're watching Dan Vinci, and I hope you enjoy this very special montage. Talk, talk, talk to the rhythm. So that montage that you've just seen there will have some of the effects that I'm going to be teaching you today in this video. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at these effects. And the first effect that we're going to be looking at is the split screen effect. And this is something I have used on a regular basis for years. And it's just a great way of showcasing various parts of a product, for in this case a car, all in one frame. So we're here in the edit page and we have three different shots all stacked on top of each other in the edit timeline. So if we just have a look at these quickly, I'll just zoom that in a little bit bit like that. These are the three shots we're going to be working with. So let's select all three of these shots, right click and click new fusion clip because what we're going to do now is immediately move into fusion and start slicing this into three different frames. Oh and I forgot to mention all of these shots and assets will be in the description in the Google Drive folder if you want to quite literally follow this step by step because I know from a lot of comments you guys really really like that so I'm going to keep that up. So when you go into fusion depending on which version you're on, if you're on the latest version it should make a node tree like this, if not don't panic. Maybe it how you'll see on screen. So what we're going to do is I'm going to delete all these merges and I'm going to figure out which one's which by clicking one on my keyboard on each one of the media ins to select and see what they are. So this one's the car so I'm going to using F2 on my keyboard I'm going to search I'm going to not search I'm going to write car. So this is the order in which I'm going to place it into the node tree. So I'm going to do the output drag it over to the output the background and just slice that in there and then I'm going to add a square rectangle mask attach the output of that to the blue triangle of the merge merge blue 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 and then I'm going to ignoring the fact that it's out of frame move this to where I want it so something like this I know it looks horrible but just bear with me then I'm going to go to the car and I'm going to do the same in fact I'll copy and paste just to save myself time the rectangle and I'll attach it to that merge I'll move it up just so it's something like that. I'm gonna do the same again with the rear of the car. Grab that, move it, something like that. Now, if you wanna be really, really picky about the layout, you can do Control G in the preview section and you can see that that's the center line there. So this isn't quite center. So I'm just gonna fix that now. now. You might be thinking, Dan, that looks horrific. And I would agree with you, but there's more, many more things to do. So the benefit of putting the rectangles here as opposed to attaching them to the mask input of the actual media in is that you can click on the merge here and move the actual shot within the mask so I'm going to sort of frame it like that I think yeah and then I'm going to grab this merge here and I'm going to so you can see the exhaust so framing wise that looks a lot better but there's even more that we can add so I'm going to drag the media out over here just to give us a bit more space to work then I might just expand the mask a little bit just so it's a bit close to the edge like that you'll see why in a moment and I'm going to make a copy of the car like that. So now I'm going to grab the exact same merge as this car shot is using because we want the position data we've set it to. So the shot is exactly on top of the other like that. Clicking on the car copy. So I'm just going to call this car two. I'm going to do control space and search magic mask. Then using the magic mask stroke tool in the inspector tab, you then want to draw a line around the subject that you want to cut out. Then we're going to click better and then we're going to track that. So now wait, let it do its thing and we'll be back right in it in just a second. Right. So perfect. The Magic Mask has done its thing and now you will see that the car is actually outside of its frame and it just makes it a little bit more interesting. So if we just move along the timeline here, look at that. Isn't that cool? I think it's sick. You could leave it where it is. This looks fantastic and I want to give you a bit more of advice. Something that could make this even better and that's adding an actual frame to split up each one of these shots. Making sure that this section of the car two with the Magic Mask is over to the right. We want to work in this section here because we want the bars to go behind this car here but still be on top of these shots here. So what we want to do is control space, search background, 
and background. Then we want to grab one of these rectangles, copy and paste it, attach it in. And as you can see, it will just make a black section to that shot because it's the same rectangle that we use there. And then we're going to go into the inspector, which is this little tab here. And we're going to go to border width, increase the border width. And then we're going to turn off solid and we will have a nice bar, which is in the exact location that we want. Now doing the same thing again, we want to just grab this rectangle here. I want to grab that background again, add that in, that and do the same thing all over again and just make sure it's sort of matching. Now, if you want to make it even more interesting because, you know, there's always something you can do to you know, make something a bit more interesting and that's adding a saber effect. I do it all the time. It looks sick. I'd recommend making these backgrounds white because it's like the core of the saber at its brightest point where it's like slightly overexposed, you know, like in the lightsabers are. And I made a video on how to do the saber effect. So I'm not going to go into that detail. You can go watch that video, which I'll leave in the card section, either there or there. But what I will do is I will leave a fusion comp in the description. So if you can't be bothered to go learn this amazing effect in fusion, you can import the comp and then just copy and paste the fusion nodes that you need to make the saber effect. So it will save you a hell of a lot of time. So in the description, you'll get this fusion thing if you, you know, being lazy. And this is the saber effect. So you just copy and paste, so copy, then just jump into fusion on your, um, you know, your, your words. Fusion tree. And then you just copy and paste it and it'll do this. But then if you just drag the output again, it'll do nothing apparently. Ah, yes. That's why it's not done anything. I'm an idiot. If you want the saber effect, you want the rectangles up here and you want them attached to the background. I'm an idiot, sorry. But I mean, that does work for the black bars. And look at that, look how good it looks. I mean, you can also add glow, a bit more glow to this, increase it so it's like proper, like glowy like that. And then we'll just copy and paste this over like that, like that. I should have just put this in the montage. Like this is really, really nice. Now this is really simple, this effect. This is a shine effect that I've used for years, not only in DaVinci Resolve, but in some of the editing platforms I used before DaVinci Resolve. So before I was Dan Vinci. So here I have the Sayat logo and this will be in the description if you want to use it. But let's jump into Fusion on this and start adding this shine effect. It is so simple. Literally all it is, is if I go into, if I click on the media in one, click control space, search glow, click enter. And then I want to make this as shiny as I possibly can. Something like this. Simples, right? Then I just have the glow here. I create a rectangle, click the output, make it fairly thin. I would recommend making the soft edge quite soft. And then I usually just put it at an angle because it looks more interesting at an angle. And then you just animate it like that. That's it. So if I just go over here, go to like 20, click center, move it over to the right, to like 40. That might be a bit quick, but for tutorial purposes, it'll be fine. Look at that shine. I'd recommend sound effects. In the description, I will leave links to the sites that I use to create my sound effects. So feel free to check them out. Weirdly, a sword sound effect works really well with this, like almost like a slice sound. It just does. And then the final effect that I use all the time when it comes to product montages is the logo mask effect. And this in DaVinci Resolve, if you know what you're doing, is really simple. So this effect is simply two assets. So I've got the shot of the car again, and I've got the logo. This time I'm gonna, you know, select them, go into create a new fusion clip, and then I'm gonna go into fusion on this, and I've created a little tree like this. So if you click one, that's the car shot, and then this one, I'm gonna call it logo. I'm going to remove this logo from the tree and I'm going to go over to car, drag the output onto there and hey presto, it's almost done. So what we can do though is if we want to adjust this a bit, we can create a transform node and whack it in between like that and now we can move it around. So you can animate this and have it zoom in and out of shot like this, exactly how I did in the montage. But yeah, that is three effects that I use extremely often, like a lot. And obviously there was more effects in that montage. I did do a video covering off wheel transitions. It's not quite the same as what I did in this montage, but you can find that video in the links in the description or on whichever side of the screen in the cards now. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will try and get back to you. Big thank you for hitting 22,000 little milestone. Feels like literally the other day I hit 20. So amazing to see the channels growing as quick as it is. I have more fantastic effects and videos and tutorials planned in the future. So stay tuned and get subscribed for some of that. But otherwise, my name's Dan, you've watched Dan Vinci, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>